again, music fans. I am back here to do one of these uh, Spotlight on My Collection videos. And this time for my favorite metal albums of the 90s. Okay, I already did the 70s. Already did the 80s. And now for the 90s, okay? So, of course, these are my favorites. You know, not I'm not saying that they're the best. Because I know that in the 90s, you know, that's when the the really extreme metal really came in, you know, death metal and black metal, even though at the time I was certainly not into that music, you know, so I'm not very, very familiar with that era of, um, of 90s death metal and black metal, all right, but I am familiar with all of these bands that I'm going to show you, and I'm sure you will agree that they are all fantastic albums, okay? Try to pick one from each band to make it 10, here we go. One that is a completely obvious Judas Priest painkiller. All right. And I'm going to go through these in more or less a chronological order. You know, from the beginning of the decade, uh, 1992 and uh, 1999. Okay. Painkiller. We all know the title track, of course. And pretty much the rest of this album is absolutely killer as well. You know, um, uh, Hell Patrol, All Guns Blazing, or um, Nightcrawler. Really cool stuff. Okay. Painkiller. Classic for a reason. This next one is this band's finest hour. Okay. Megadeth, The Rust in Peace. Absolutely stellar from beginning to end. I mean, just the songwriting, the performance. Just every note in its place, not a note out of place. And uh, and uh, it just takes you through, even though this is not a concept album, of course it has a loose theme to it, you know, with nuclear war, war and all that. A theme that Megadeth would return to many times later. All right, but uh, this is just perfection. Metal perfection there. It, it combines, you know, elements of thrash, elements of the much more uh, technical side. You know, it's very progressive, this album. Rust and Peace. Needless to say, my favorite Megadeth album. And one of my favorite albums of all time, not just the 90s. This one is, uh, ever since I heard it, it's like just a, a sledgehammer to the face. It's so heavy, so uh, grab you by the throat. The songs are great. And one of my favorite bands as well. This is Metal Church, The Human Factor, okay? And there is such an angry quality to this, you know, with songs like A Date with Poverty right there, and uh, which is, it has an almost punk feel to some of the songs, you know, with, with that very hard-hitting um, aspect to them. Metal Church, The Human Factor, one of my favorites also of all time. Here I'm... Uh, this is probably the, the lightest, you know, the least heaviest one sound-wise, even though it does feel heavy, all right, because the songs are so great. And uh, this is a one that the band themselves and fans all over have have uh, touted as a classic, Armored Saints, Symbol of Salvation, okay? And uh, this is my OG cassette copy from back then. And again, the entire album. And of course, from the title track, um, the all all of the songs, you know, great performance as well. Great vocals, also. Love the vocals here. I could have picked any album from the '90s from this band because this band in general does not have a bad album. Okay, uh, but uh, I'm just going with a little bit. Uh, with this one, which is Sabotage, and that is Handful of Rain, right there. Very heavy stuff. They would uh, then go on to more of the, you know, elaborate, the classically inspired, almost symphonic stuff in uh, Dead Winter Dead and then The Wake of Magellan, okay, which of course were precursors to uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. But Handful of Rain is completely metal. Right there. Could have gone with Edge of Thorns, Streets Rock Opera, 
by here I go with this one. Any of the one of those would have been fantastic. And this is not only this band's finest hour. It is considered a high watermark for the entire genre of power metal. Okay, I'm talking, of course, about Blind Guardian and the Imaginations from the Other Side. Another one that takes you on a journey from beginning to end. All the songs are fantastic here. You know, title track, I'm Alive, A Past and Future Secret, a Bright Eyes, and the story ends, great album closer. You know, it just brings everything um, uh, to, to a great close with a great ending. Blind Guarding, Imagination from the Other Side. I do have this one also in the live uh, anniversary edition here. Live in Oberhausen. Great stuff. Here with the only one that I'm going to show from a solo artist. And this ties in because one of the bands that of course I put in the 80s, which is Iron Maiden, they didn't really do much. Well, they did things in the 90s, you know. But the things that were very uneven and that are that have not aged well, in my opinion. But however... Bruce Dickinson's solo work was stellar. And I could have gone with the previous one to this, uh, Accident of Birth, but I'm going with this one, which I think is a bit better, you know, a bit darker and heavier, uh, The Chemical Wedding. Great cover there by William Blake, I believe, is the the artist. Of course, uh, an artist from the from the 19th century. Okay. Just the... the also on the back cover is one of his paintings. You know, um, title track, King Inscription, uh, Gates of Your Eyes, The Alchemist, all great stuff, you know. Iron Man Maiden wishes they were putting out stuff as good as this during the 90s. Bruce Whitson, all of Dickinson's work, you know, uh, solo work is really, really good. But this, I believe, is his finest hour. We now go with a band that, at the time, in the 90s, I was aware of, and I did listen to a bit of them. Though it was only until later that I really, really appreciated them. And that is a Death. Here with the sound of Perseverance. From becoming one of the uh, pioneers of death metal, they also pioneered uh, progressive metal, and uh, what is now uh, technical death metal, okay? This album is fantastic. The guitar passages, the compositions. Mine is this strange version that has this uh, border on it. And it is, it says here, the deluxe edition, because it also contains a DVD with a live set from back then. Death, The Sound of Perseverance, a classic. When I first got this album from one of my favorite bands, I was just uh, blown away at how absolutely heavy it was. I mean, it was just grabbed you by the throat, and that's Testaments, The Gathering, right here. And um, DNR, Down for Life, uh, Eyes of Wrath, The Believer, I mean... What can you say? Three Days in Darkness. I mean, it just the pummeling heaviness of this combined with excellent songwriting. Okay. Testament, The Gathering. From here on out, everything would be great for, uh, for Testament albums. Um, though this one holds a special place in my heart here for the, in the 90s era Testament at least. The Gathering. And I am ending here with another band where I could have pick, picked any album of theirs from the 90s and it would have been, would have been stellar. But uh, if Operation Mindcrime was the um, great concept album of the 80s, this is the one for the 90s. Dream Theaters, Scenes from a Memory, um, Metropolis Part 2, Scenes from a Memory. Okay. Again, a concept album that takes you from takes you on a ride, takes you on a journey. Compositions here 
are stellar. And of course, the musicianship is uh, just uh, next level stuff. Love listening to this one. I also have, of course, the 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 live at least two live versions of 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 this set here, as well as uh, live versions of individual songs and, and other albums. But here, Metropolis Part Two, Scenes from a Memory, incredible stuff. There you go, my ten favorite from the nineties. You know, uh, a decade where at the time I was kind of like you know just waiting around for the next Black Sabbath one the next Iron Maiden one, or the next Priest one, or even though Priest did deliver. Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath, not so much, even though I almost put here uh, one of my favorite Black Sabbath albums, which is uh, Tear. I love, love that album. I think it's great, even though I did, do believe it suffers a bit in the heaviness department. You know, great songs, but a bit on the lighter side. And so I do prefer uh, all of these that I, I presented more than that one. If I had made 10 or 15 albums in this list, that one would have been included. Okay? For the 2000s, I was going to put the 2000s and 2010s in one uh, video, but I think I am going to split it up into those two decades. Do 2000 and 2010s because there was a lot of great stuff, you know, in uh, these past two decades. For now, thank you very much for watching. Keep rocking.